Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Good evening teacher. Good evening. Okay, we are starting the second week. We are almost in the middle of the course. Uh, so we are going to have the session number one and uh, the end of the four sessions. We are going to be in the last two weeks. The time is running so fast. So we are going to uh, begin this week with the praise because uh, you know that I like to share some phrases with you. So we are going to start uh, reading the phrase that I have for you this week. So this is the phrase and it says, your future is created by what you do today, not tomorrow. So if you have your own dreams, if you want to do something, you need to do it now. Now is the perfect time to do your action so you are creating your future right now and you are not going to uh, let time pass by so you are going to create your own future now now tomorrow so in the past week we had a lot of topics that we were developing and now we are going to continue with that um that job so now we are going to have like three different topics because they are very short. And we are going to have information about those topics. And also we are going to have an exercise that is on the platform. So we are going to listen the audio that we have in the platform. And then we are going to see the exercises with the answers. Maybe uh, many of you have um, completed that section, but we are going to see that a specific exercise because we are going to talk about a specific topic related to the exercise. So we are going to start with the first topic and we are going to see what is that topic. So we have here that the topic is infinity complement. If you can see in the platform, we have this topic in which it says that we use the infinite supplements to give advices. So now we are going to see what are the infinity supplements. We are going to see some example of bird that we can use for that um, specific um, use. And also we are going to see some examples um, using it for giving advices. So the first thing, we are going to write general information about uh, the infinity complement. That is basically the, uh, the base form, we can say, the base form of the verb, but using uh, the uh, suffix to. So it says, infinity is obtained by adding the suffix to. In this case, we are going to, uh, to use this word to in front of the verb. Using the verb in plain form. Básicamente, ¿qué estamos diciendo acá? Decimos que utilizamos el infinitivo o lo obtenemos agregando to, la T y la O, enfrente del verbo que estamos utilizando y que está en su forma plana, base, sin cambio, ¿verdad? Entonces, básicamente es eso lo que vamos a utilizar nosotros. To plus verb. And it says, just like Jaren, it is a name verb that can be used in the case of a subject or object in a sentence. It can be a single word sometimes, it can be a group of words.
it says that it can be a single word and sometimes it can be a group of words. So, um, in that case, uh, we can say that we can use this, um, this infinitive uh, using just a single word, or in some cases, that is not like, we are going to do it all the time. In some cases, we are going to use a group of words that we can use for this uh, infinitive. We are going to see some examples there of the verb plus infinitive and the verb plus infinitive or gerund. So in that case, we are going to see uh, which words we can use with the two. And in the other, uh, we are going to see some of these ones that we can use as infinitive complements or also we can use for gerund. So we are going to have like a um, table in which we are going to see the examples. So in the first one we have verb plus infinitive. And in the other one, we have a verb plus infinitive or gerund. And we are going to move this one because we have some examples here. So we have the verb appear, arrange. Ask, care, choose, decline, demand, deserve, desire, expect, fail, Guarantee, happen, hope, intend, manage, need. Offer, plan, let, resolve, theme. Send, a struggle, swear. Volunteer, wait, want, wish, and would like. For the verb plus infinitive or gerund, in this case, we can use both of them 
uh, we have uh, less verbs that we can use with the in the infinitive or the gerund. So for the first one, we have attempt, begin, can or cannot be here, can or cannot stand. Please continue, forget, prefer, regret, propose, remember, C R stop and try. So basically, in this case, we are talking about some uh, verbs that we can use with its in infinitive form, or some verbs that we can use with its infinitive uh, version or with gerund. Remember that in this case is using verbs that we can, um, or a sentence that we can create uh, using the infinitive to give advices. But how can we create that sentence using the infinitive verb for that specific uh, proposed? Uh, it's, it's simple because in that case, we are just going to use the verb eh, with its base form. Estamos hablando de que estos eh, verbos los podemos utilizar para crear oraciones que nos ayuden a dar un consejo. En este caso, utilizamos el to y el verbo para crear ese complemento que necesitamos. Y vamos a ver algunos ejemplos. This uh, topic is not like a very long. In this case, we're just uh, to create some examples. And then we are going to see the other topic. But in this case, we are going to see the examples in which we are going to have these complements. We have the first one, and it says, what should I do for a call? There is a question. What should I do for a call? ¿Qué debería hacer o qué podría hacer para un resfriado? In that case, someone is asking us uh, about uh, something that we can do for a specific situation. In that case, is the person is having a call. So we need to give an advice to help that uh, person to feel better. So in that case, we can say, we can say it is a good idea it's a good idea to take to take some vitamin C. Es una buena idea que tomes que tomes vitamina C. So in this case, this is the complement to take. So in that case, we are using the infinitive to give advices. It is a good idea to take some vitamin C. Entonces, para nuestros eh, consejos, vamos a tratar de que nuestro verbo quede con el to. Vamos a utilizar el to con el verbo para dar advice, para dar consejos. Another example. It says, I told her to go to bed. I told her to go to bed. Le dije que se fuera a la cama. Maybe it's late. Maybe she is not feeling uh, well or something like that. So in that case, you are telling someone to do something. So in that case, we are using infinitive version. 
another example and it says you have to take again you have to take care of your health you have to take care of your health to take again in that case, if you are saying someone that they have to take care of their health because maybe they are like not sleeping well, they are drinking too much, they are not eating um, vegetables, they are not eating food, or they are not um, drinking water, something like that. So in that case, if you are giving an advice to take care of the hill. So in that case, when you are going to give an advice of something, any specific, in this case, as something related to health, you um, need to use the infinitive complement. Siempre que vayan a dar un consejo, en este caso, si tiene que ver con salud o un consejo en general, van a tratar de utilizar eh, la forma infinitiva donde utilizan el to y el verbo en su forma base para poder crear estos infinitive complements. And that's it. That's all the things that you need to do. So, very, very simple. Esa era toda la información que teníamos para los infinitive complements. Now, we are going to see a conversation that I have here, but it's the second topic that we are going to develop right now. That is this one conversation used using model verbs, but also they are talking about health issues. Uh, in this case, we have a pharmacist and we have a Mrs. Webb, that is a old lady that is asking for something. And we are going to see some examples of how to use a model verbs in this kind of conversation. So we have the conversation and it says. Hi, may I help you? Hi, may I help you? Yes, please. Could I have something for a cup? Could I have something for a cup? I think I'm getting a call. Well, I suggest a box of these soft drops. Thank you. And what do you suggest for a dry skin? Try some of this new lotion. It's very good. Okay, and one more thing. My husband has no energy these days. Can you suggest anything? He should try some of these multivitamins. They are excellent. Great. May I have three large bottles, please? Tenemos esa conversación en donde estamos viendo eh, que hablan de cosas de salud. Están comprando algo porque eh, la señora cree que tiene o oh, siente, ¿verdad? Los síntomas de un resfriado. También está preguntando por la piel seca y que su esposo no tiene energía. So in that case, they are talking about um, or using uh, vocabulary related to health. But also they are using a demodal verb. That is the topic that we were developing the last week um, in which we were saying that we have different modal verbs that are can, cool, be able to, make, might, shall, should, must, have to, will, and will. And here I'm going to write the sentences in which they are using the model verb. So in this case, we are going to say model verb phrases. And I'm going to write the phrases that they, they are using when uh, or in which they are using the model verb. So in the first line, hi, may I help you? May I help you? That is one sentence using model verb. May I help you? Our model verb here is may. May I help you? Then it says, could I have something for a car? Could I have something for a car? Cool. 
That is another example. And we have here the model verb that is cool. Then it says, can you suggest anything? Can you suggest anything? Another question with a model verb. In this case, we have can. Then we have another example, and, it's, uh, and he said, he should, he should try some of these multivitamins. We have here, sure, that is the model verb. And we have another one. May I have three large bottles? May I have three large bottles? And again, we have may. So let's see if this one is the last one. Yes, that is the last one. So. Remember, and I'm going to write, let me see. Mm, I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to write it here. The, um, the model verse, just to remember uh, the, um, the model verse that we have. Model verbs. This is just a reminder. We have can, we have cool, and we have be able to. Also, we have may, might, shall, sure. Must, have to, and the last one, will and will. Así que recuerden que ya hablamos de los modal verbs, que decíamos, ¿verdad?, que es un tipo de auxiliar que eh, se usa para expresar habilidad, posibilidad, permisos, obligaciones. And it says that, eh, they are expressing the same thing as model, but are a combination of auxiliary uh, and the preposition to. In that case, the semi-models are those ones that, that have the same meaning, but they are a combination. And we have these ones, and they are very specific because in, uh, they have its structure and how to create sentences in which we have the formulas um, and the other topics that we were developing. Así que si ustedes quieren seguir viendo, ¿verdad? Los, um, las fórmulas de los modal verbs lo tenemos más arriba en el documento si ustedes ya tienen acceso. Si hay alguno de ustedes que no tiene acceso al documento, me recuerda para volver a enviar el enlace al grupo, porque ahí se va a estar actualizando, ¿verdad? Siempre que si vamos algo nuevo, se va a ir actualizando en ese documento, en el link. So, in that case, we have the formula for the model verb, and we see the examples in the conversation in which we have some uh, phrases using model verbs asking for advices and also asking for 
uh, vocabulary related to health. So in that case, mm -hmm. okay. Yes, in this case, they are not using the uh, infinitive complement. In the conversation, they are just using the uh, model verbs, and they are not using the infinitive complement. So in that case, it is a different topic to the um, to the infinitive complements that we were talking uh, before. So let's see. We're going to uh, hear uh, uh, an audio, but let me check if I can hear the audio because in some cases it is not working. Vamos a escuchar un audio que está en la plataforma in the exercise or in the part 2.13 that is a listening call try this. So we are going to listen at the audio and then we are going to read the exercise in which we need to choose um, the correct answer. So we are going to, give me a second if I can hear the audio. I think it's not working right now. Mm. No, it is not functioning. So I will um, let this one uh, for a while. And we are going to explain um, this part that is listening for a specific information. It wants to work. Quiere funcionar, pero al mismo tiempo no quiere funcionar el audio. Okay. We are going to let it be. So we are going to talk about uh, listening for specific information because in when we are learning English, um, we need to understand how to find the information that we need to um, recognize the information that we are going to use for a conversation. So it's very important that we pay attention to the details. In some cases, it is not necessary to uh, listen in uh, the whole conversation to find the information that we need. In some cases, it's to pay attention to the keywords. Keywords are the clues. In some cases, um, we are not paying enough attention to the conversation that we are having with uh, someone else. But if we find the keywords, we are going to have the information that we need about the, the conversation that we are having. Así que es importante que eh, entendamos que necesitamos en muchos de los casos palabras clave, keywords, palabras claves para entender lo que la otra persona nos está diciendo. No siempre estamos eh, enfocados en lo que la persona habla, pero sí podemos encontrar, sí podemos encontrar la información que necesitamos. So, now it's working. So we are going to go to the platform and listening carefully. We are going to listen to the audio. So, pay attention and I will play twice the audio. Listen to four people talk to a pharmacist. Check each person's problem. One. Can I help you? Yes, I'd like something for my feet. I went on a long hike yesterday and my feet are really sore. I see. Why don't you try some of this ointment? You can put it on at night. It's very good for sore feet. I use it myself, actually. Two. Excuse me. 
I'm looking for something for a stomach ache. I see. How long have you had this problem? For a few days, and it's getting worse. I'll give you some pills to take for a few days. They should help. Take two of these three times a day with meals. Three. Can I help you? Yes. I just came back from London on a long flight, and I'm having trouble sleeping. We have several things for that, including sleeping pills. But I suggest you try some of this herbal tea. It's very good for jet lag. Drink some before you go to bed at night. Thanks. I'll try it. I don't like taking sleeping pills. Four. Good morning. What can I do for you? Um, I need something for a burn. I burned my hand a little when I was cooking last night. Look here. Oh, yes. I'll give you some cream for it. After you put on the cream, place a bandage over it for a few days. You should be fine. Thanks. Okay, that is one time. Listen. Uh, we listen the whole conversation. We listen the whole information. But in some cases, we, we don't know what we are looking for. What we are going to do right now, first, we are going to read the options that we have. And then we are going to listen again the conversation or the information that we have. And is going to be easier to understand what we are looking for. So we have in the number one, we need to know if the men's feet are sore or if the men's feet are itchy. We need to know uh, what is happening with the men. Number two, we need to know if the woman can eat or if the woman has an upset stomach. Number three, we need to know if the man has difficulty sleeping or the man is sleeping too much. And in the last one, we need to know if the woman born her hand or the woman has a bad son born. Entonces, sabiendo que necesitamos buscar a la hora de escuchar la conversación o la información, Ya sabemos qué es lo que vamos a escoger. We are going to listen again, and then you are going to tell me the answer for the uh, this exercise. So, let's see. We are going to listen again, and then you are going to tell me the answers. It's not, uh, it doesn't want to work. I don't know. We are going to give it time because it needs time to function. I mean, let me, let me do something. Give me one moment because it's going to work. Miss, excuse me, y se okay. le da en la flechita de la esquina, de arriba. Um, it's, it's something related to my internet connection. So, mm. Eh, mm. Sí, porque a veces a mí tampoco me agarra a darle play, entonces me lo abre en otra página cuando uno le da la flechita esa de arriba de la esquina derecha. Uh -huh. Sí, pero en este caso es más que todo por el problema de la de la conexión que funciona y no funciona. So, we are going to listen oh, right now. Okay. So, okay. Let's see. Thank you. We'll talk to a. I don't know if. Uh, let me see. Yeah, I am sharing the sound. So again, listen. Pharmacist, check each person's problem. 
one. Can I help you? Yes, I'd like something. for my feet. I went on a long hike yesterday and my Listen to four people talk to a pharmacist. Check each person's problem. One. Can I help you? Yes, I'd like something for my feet. I went on a long hike yesterday and my feet are really sore. I see. Why don't you try So as you can see, um I'm having troubles with the internet connection because in my uh, here it's uh it was raining like five minutes ago, so um I am having troubles with the connection, so uh, something like this, like this is going to happen uh, multiple times, I guess. So we are going to continue. So let's see. Let's move, let's move, let's move. We are going to try to change the window in which we are listening at the audio, but it is not working really well because of the signal is, I guess it's too weak. So it is, um, it's not working really well. Okay, I guess it's going to be better in this one. So again, we are going to One. do it. Can I help you? Yes, I'd like something for my feet. I went on a long hike yesterday and my feet are really sore. I see. Why don't you try some of this ointment? You can put it on at night. It's very good for sore feet. I use it myself, actually. Two. Excuse me. I'm looking for something for a stomachache. I see. How long have you had this problem? For a few days, and it's getting worse. I'll give you some pills to take for a few days. They should help. Take two of these three times a day with meals. Three. Can I help you? Yes. I just came back from London on a long flight, and I'm having trouble sleeping. We have several things for that, including sleeping pills. But I suggest you try some of this herbal tea. It's very good for jet lag. Drink some before you go to bed at night. Thanks. I'll try it. I don't like taking sleeping pills. Four. Good morning. What can I do for you? Um, I need something for a burn. I burned my hand a little when I was cooking last night. Look here. Oh, yes. I'll give you some cream for it. After you put on the cream, place a bandage over it for a few days. You should be fine. Thanks. Okay, so we were listening to uh, the uh, information that we have about deeper, the people that were um, talking with the pharmacy. So, for the first one, what is the problem that, that these men have? One, the men, uh, the men's feet are sore or the men's feet are itchy. So what is the correct one? The men's feet are sore. 
good. Women's feet are sore. That is the first option. So, we have number two. What is the problem with this woman? She can eat or she has an upset stomach. She has an upset stomach. Oh, good. Has an upset stomach. Number three. This man has difficulty sleeping or is sleeping too much? The man has difficult sleeping. Good. He has difficult sleeping. And the last one. The woman born in her hand or the woman has a bad sunburn. The woman burned her hand. Good, amazing. Thank you for the participation. So in that case, she burned her hand because she was cooking. Good. The four answers are uh, correct. So we are going to uh, change for the document in which we are going to talk about uh, five essentials uh, that we are going to use for the listening skill, because in this case, we are talking about a listening skills for English learners. So in that case, we are going to see what are the parts of what are the things that we are doing when we are listening uh, some things in English, in this case, because it's the, the language that we are learning, and what can we do for um, improve that skill? So we are going to see the document in which we have the information that we are going to develop. So here uh, we have the topic that is a listening for a specific information. In that case, it's just exercise because we were, uh, we're going to listen to the exercise, but in that case, we did the exercise already. So, listening is one of the four macro skills that we need to develop in English language. We have listening, writing, reading, and speaking. So, there are four macro skills, and one of these is listening. That is very, very important because if we are not listening and understanding the things that people are saying, it's going to be very complicated to produce the language or even to understand the things that people are saying. So, in that case, it, it says that um, how can learners improve their listening comprehension? How can we? as a learner of a second language improve our skills. In this case, we are going to talk about the, um, the five uh, essential listening skills that we can improve to um, have these listening skills in a better way. So why listening is important for us as um, English learners. It says that it should not be difficult to realize the importance of listening when we consider that it occupies about 45% of the time adults spend in communication. It means it has a long percentage of a time that we spend listening. This is significantly more than it's speaking, which accounts for 30% and reading and writing, which make up 16% and 9% respectively. ¿Qué decimos? 45% del de tiempo que nosotros ocupamos es escuchando. Quiere decir que está por encima, ¿verdad? De las otras cuatro eh, macro skills que nosotros tenemos en inglés. Why? In some cases, we like to listen what people is saying, but we don't like to speak. And in some cases, we don't like to read because it, we find it um, boring and exhausting and something like that. And writing is not 
really common uh, these days because we have technology and we are using it for short conversation. So in that case, listening is very important because we spend more of the time listening. Um, it says the listening challenge for English language learners. There are many difficulties an individual may face in understanding a whole lecture or conversation in a second language, and sometimes even in their first language. This is not related to the process that we are having right now. This is, if we pay attention to the things someone is saying, we can understand the things, the idea. But in this case, we have even uh, problems listening in Spanish. So it is like we are going to have problems listening in English because it's a new language. Estamos diciendo que en muchos de los casos podemos llegar a tener problemas incluso cuando escuchamos una conversación en nuestro idioma natal, que podemos llamarlo español. Vamos a tener problemas porque tal vez no estamos prestando la suficiente atención o no nos interesa el tema de conversación o lo encontramos aburrido. So in that case, we are going to have uh, troubles listening. So. While the challenge possessed by the speaker or the situation may be out of the listener's hands, there are few skills or strategies that English learners can use to help them along. So we are going to see strategies. Estrategias que podemos utilizar cuando eh, se nos sale de nuestro control, ¿verdad? El, el poder entender la conversación o la información que estamos escuchando en inglés. So, we have the first strategy that is predicting uh, the content. Vamos a predecir. And it says, imagine, we are going to use the imagination. Imagine you are just turned on your TV. You see a man in a suit standing in front of a large map with the symbol of the song, clown and thunder. What do you imagine he is about to tell you? First, listen. You turn on your TV. You see a man in a suit standing in a front of a large map with a symbol of a sun. Okay, I'm sorry. So I was saying, you see a man on the TV that is wearing a suit is uh, in front of a map that has symbols of sun, clouds, and thunder. What do you imagine he is about to tell you? So, what do you think? ¿Qué les va a decir este hombre parado frente a un mapa con eh, símbolos de sol, de rayos, de nubes. What is he going to talk about? What is the topic that he, that he is going to, to say? What do you think? Where? The weather. Ah, okay. The weather. He is going to talk about the weather. So in that case, you are not listening what is he saying. You are seeing the details that you have. En este caso, no estamos nosotros escuchando en realidad lo que él está diciendo. Estamos haciendo una predicción basados en los detalles. So in that case, predicting content without listening or even paying attention because in that case, we are going to have a lot of details involved. So, depending on the context, a news report or a, or a new university lecture, an exchange in a supermarket, you can often predict the kind of word and style of language the speaker will use. Our knowledge of the word helps us anticipate the kind of information we are likely to hear. Moreover, when we predict the topic of a talk or a conversation, 
All the related vocabulary stored in our brain is activated to help us better understand what we are listening to. So in that case, it's necessary that we create vocabulary of everything. Because in that case, when we are having a real conversation, we are going to have all the knowledge in our brains and we are going to take the words and we are going to create the idea of the topic that someone is talking. Por eso es importante que hagamos vocabularios de temas que no sabemos o que pensamos que se nos pueden olvidar. Al tener ese vocabulario, lo vamos adquiriendo, adquiriendo, adquiriendo de manera eh, inmediata sin que nosotros nos demos cuenta y a la hora de que alguien tenga una conversación con nosotros, vamos a tener todo ese vocabulario desordenado, por supuesto, pero que nos va a ayudar a entender lo que nos están diciendo. Number two, it's saying, listen and forget. And it says, imagine you are a superhero flying in the sky. You are a superhero flying in the sky. So that is, it is possible to see what the entire area is like, how densely populated it is, the kind of houses in each area. When listening, it is also possible to get the whole picture, but with one crucial difference. Information comes in a sequence, and in that sequence of information, there are content words, the nouns, adjectives, and verbs that can help you from that picture. We often call this listening for gifts. For example, the word food, friends, fun, park, and holiday have um, their own meaning. But when you hear the words in sequence, they help you from the context of a picnic. So, listening for guests is to um, make a sequence of words in which you can have the whole information. En este caso, vamos a utilizar palabras y las vamos a formar, las vamos a unir y nos va a dar una idea. Así como dice acá, si escuchamos las palabras en una conversación, aunque no le hemos puesto atención, se habla de comida, amigos, diversión y el parque y un día soleado, inmediatamente nuestro cerebro va a crear una imagen. ¿De qué? De un picnic, de un día de campo, de una salida. So in that case, we have just a specific words that are giving us the information that we need about the uh, conversation. Number three. Detecting sign spots. Sign post. It says, just like traffic lines on roads, there are sign posts in language that uh, help us to follow what we are listening to. These words, which link ideas, help us to understand what the speaker is talking about and where they are talking us. They are particularly important in presentation and lectures. For example, if a university lecturer said, I am going to talk about three factors affecting global warming. Then later on you might hear the phrase, First of all, moving on, and in summary, to indicate the next part of the talk. Other words and phrases can function in a similar way, for, for instance, to clarify. In other words, to put in another way. To give examples, to illustrate this, for example, and so on. Say, um, we have a list of phrases. So, nos dan señales a la hora de hablar. Por ejemplo, el, lo que dice acá. Si dice, en este caso, it's saying, si dice, 
voy a hablar de tres factores que afectan al calentamiento global, afectan al, 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 para que se dé el calentamiento global. Y dice luego, eh, primero, en lo primero que todo, o oh, número uno, por ejemplo, luego dice, nos movemos hacia, o oh, en resumen, in that case, it's saying us that they are going to talk about the three factors that affect the global warming. So in that case, we're going to find some places that can help us to understand or to find the information that we need. Next, we have listening for details, like the example that we did with the exercise in the platform. Listening for details. And it says, imagine you are a, a detective taking a closer look at those buildings you saw um, earlier on, a, on as a superhero. This time, rather than taking the big picture, you are looking for something specific and rejecting anything that doesn't match what's on your list. Similarly, when listening for details, you are interested in a specific kind of information, perhaps a number, name, or object. You can ignore anything that does not sound relevant in this way. You are able to narrow down your search and get the details you need. So in this case, you are going to um, just listen the things that you need to listen. En este caso, solo vamos a escuchar las cosas específicas que necesitamos. For example, you are doing an exercise and you need to find a number. You're not going to listen everything. You're not going to pay attention to um, the whole conversation. You are going to listen in which sentence the people is saying the number that you need. So in that case, you are listening for detail. And the number uh, five, that is the last one, is inferring meaning. It says, imagine you are a tourist in a country whose language you do not speak. In a restaurant, you hand over a credit card to pay the bill, but you serve things to say something apolog apologetic in response. Even though you don't understand his words, you can probably conclude that the restaurant doesn't take credit cards and you need to pay with cash instead. This is the technique of inferring meaning, using clues and um, prior knowledge about our situation to work out the meaning of what we hear. Similarly, we can infer the relationship between people from the words they use without having to find out directly, okay? And we have the example. So, in that case, we don't speak the language, but we are seeing the clues that people is giving to us. And la última es a través de eh, las pistas que nosotros vamos a encontrar la información que necesitamos. Así como en el ejemplo, estamos en un país del cual nosotros no hablamos el idioma, pagamos con una tarjeta de crédito y vemos un movimiento, ¿verdad? Que nos hace pensar, ah, no utilizan o no reciben tarjetas de crédito y tendré que pagar con efectivo. Lo mismo vamos a hacer con la conversación. Escuchar puntos específicos para encontrar la información. So, we are going to end the session here and we are going to see each other tomorrow in the session number two of, of week number two. So, have a really good night and see you tomorrow. Tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.